Hi guys, how uh, are you? I'm here with one of the most important names of the English Chef Comics. He created directors like Luke Cage, Iron Fist, Vision, and of course more characters that you already seen on big screen. I'm here with Mr. Roy Thomas. How are you, sir? Glad to, glad to meet you. Mr. Thomas, my first question is always the same. Who are you? Well, I, I, I don't know. I'm just this guy who uh, got into comic books and ended up in 1965 working for Stan Lee and I've had a you know a nice career in comics and related fields ever since. That's perfect. And one one important thing, you were one of the first people to actually give women space to write superhero comics. How important is diversity and representation in comics and how do you think that has evolved over the time? I mean women? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean We always had more male readers than women, but maybe one reason for that is we only had a men's point of view. So at first we were a little afraid to have women's names in the comics. We were afraid some guys would be scared off. They, oh, they don't want to read a girl's comic. So we so we used their initials, you know. But then we very quickly got into using real names. Linda Fight and my, my first wife, Jean Thomas, and uh, a few other people. And, and now, of course, I got... Christy Marks and a few other people started, and now there uh, there are quite a few of them now. That's good, you know, because comics should be for all people, every sex, race, street, whatever, you know. They shouldn't just be for one group. And uh, anything we could do to widen that um, that field, you know, is better. It's good. Yeah, perfect. And uh, uh, here is interesting. Uh, how do you see the evolution of comics over the decades and the changes in the way they are produced and consumed? Well, I don't follow. I haven't followed comics recently for the last few decades that closely, uh, but they they've just gotten wider. I think in their appeal, as I said, it used to be uh, a little narrower appeal. Very few women readers or whatever. You know, uh, we didn't have any. You know, peak characters of color. We didn't have to. And I I think that uh, as long as you don't make it look as if those are the only good comics, I think it's great to have every sort of division you can have in, in the comics. You know, sometimes maybe they go a little far and they make it look like it has to have 10 different races in, in, in order to be any good. That's not true either. A comic book should just be a good story. Sometimes it's all about people of one race, say, or sex. Sometimes it's about people of 10 different races or sexes. You know, they're all they're all good if the people writing them are good. They sh and other people shouldn't tell other people how to write good comics. Just let the people write the comics and let people decide which ones are good by buying them or not buying them. Perfect. And before you become a great comic book writer, editor and chef of Marvel, one of the biggest names in the comic industry, you were just a fan like the rest of us. Uh, for you, how important is the fan's relationship with, with when uh, producing a comic? Do you think that when reading a comic, it's, it is possible to know if a person uh, who is writing really loves what they are doing? I don't know if it always is. I think a lot of it comes through. But I don't know. Some people may be able to write a good comic that makes it look like they care. They're just very good writers. I don't know if it's important. In my case, it helped a lot uh, because I was close. I was a little older than the average comic reader when I came into the field at 24. But at the same time, I had I had a lot of the same feelings and likes and dislikes as those readers. Which is why Stan liked it. Perfect. Uh, and. You did Tarzan in 1977 uh, alongside John Buscema, yeah. and together you made the 16 editions of Lord of the Jungle. What, what's your perspective of, of Tarzan's lasting impact on popular culture, especially considering his con your contribution on the character's comic? Well, Tarzan is a, a very much I'm a period character. Comes out of the you know turn of the early 20th century, and. Some aspects of them don't work as well. It, you can't you can't really have a I don't think you can have a Tarzan in, in say today's Africa. It doesn't make much sense. I think he made sense as a weird hero only in a certain in a certain period. But I think he is one of the great adventure heroes of all time. His 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 adventures, his worlds that Edgar Rice Burroughs created it have influenced comic writers, pulp writers, movie writers and directors and so much ever since that 1912 day when he did first John Carter of Mars and then Tarzan and I think that you know he's one of the great he influenced Stan Lee he influenced Jack Kirby he influenced you know all these editors and myself included 
Perfect. And uh, two first, two last questions. Uh, the first time you wrote Red Soldier and actually developed her as a comic book character was in the 70s. Uh, in 2018, uh, together with Esteban Maroto, you produced the comic The Ballad of the Red uh, Goddess. For you, uh, what was the experience of working on the same character after, after so many years? What is the difference in de developing a female character nowadays and in uh, the mentality of the 70s? Then? I didn't really do it much differently. Uh, the only difference was the uh, I told them that I could write the story, but I, d I wanted the artist to kind of plot it because I didn't have time to make up a story. I didn't Ordinarily, I like. To, I'm sorry. I, ordinarily, I like to plot the stories. Yeah. In this case, because they needed it for a, a deadline for a Barcelona convention, I didn't have time to plot the story, or otherwise I would have done that. But they came up with some nice stories, and then I, when I wrote them, I changed them a little bit. Uh, I think they're a little more violent. And, you know, of course, we don't have this comics code we used to have in the states that kind of tamed everything down. So I could, it could be a little wilder, a little more violent, a little more. Could have been a little more sexual, yeah. you know, and I, I think that's also the good. Cooler. It could be cooler. Yeah, and it's also the good. Yeah, that's perfect. And the last question uh, it's a known fact that you are Staley Protege, so, and you two are compared a lot. But for you, what are your, your main differences as a writer as an, as, and as an editor? Well, as an editor, I, I sort of had to control other writers, and, and that, in some ways, I didn't really like that because I just wanted to find good. I, I, I wanted to find good writers that let them write the way they wanted, as long as it fit in the Marvel style. They had a wide latitude, and so in the end, I decided I'd rather just write my own comics and not be the flirting it over other people. I didn't really didn't have much interest in that kind of thing, but. When you say comparing me and Stan, I mean, that, that's like comparing Captain America and Bucky, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Stan, people like Stan Lee and Jack Kirby are much more important to comics than I am. I'm happy to, you know, to contribute, to make up some other characters or develop some of theirs along. And so forth. I'm happy to have entered the field and been able to work with such titans as Lee and Kirby and Ditko and... Ramita and Buscema. I mean, you know, I was a very lucky guy to be able to work with all these people. I even worked with Stranko and Neil Adams and, you know, all these great people. And, you know, it's, it's been a, when I look back on it, I think, you know, that's not a bad job to have had for the last, uh, you know, six, almost 60 years now. It'll be, in a couple of years, it'll be 60 years since I walked into Stan's office and walked out with an assignment to write Millie the Mop. You know, <laughs> that's perfect. Mr. Thomas, thank you so much for participating. What uh, do you want to say something to your Brazilian fans in that moment? Well, I, you know, I've, been very, I've never been in Brazil before. I was at the Peruvian end of the Amazon some years ago because I wanted to see the Amazon. But now it's nice to finally be in Brazil. I had to miss a chance or two before, and I was glad to be able to make it this time. And having a lot of fun. We've got two more days. Thank you so much. Bye, guys.